Good evening, everybody. Five by five, says Glenn, first one on the screen. Good evening. Hope everybody's doing well. It's a couple minutes after five. Sorry, I almost never start after five. I had a little computer issue this afternoon last minute, and I kind of had to restart and do a few things. So I didn't really do a lot of proofing of this, so hopefully it will be okay or close enough. They're never quite perfect in terms of cosmetically or grammar, but they get the point across. Beginner's Handbook. I suspect we'll have kind of a light turnout for this one because, uh, quite honestly, some people are probably embarrassed to even attend something called Beginner's Handbook. And some of it is truly for beginners. I get a lot of questions, and I thought this would be a good time for people who want to just truly ask some questions, who want to figure out, um, you know, what, what to do, how to get started. So I do want to encourage a lot of open questions from anybody. Some of it will be, um, well, it, it is all really geared toward beginners, but yet the most important part of what I'm going to talk about probably applies to everyone who trades, period. Because a lot of people probably did not get started right. Anybody who's still having an issue, some of the things I talk about today may actually be your answer, even though it may not be necessarily directed directed toward you. So there'll be just some general outline slides here. I'm going to kind of talk a lot and ad lib a lot, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. So along the way, please feel free to ask any questions that you have. This is your time to do that. I, I'm not thoroughly happy with this because I realized as I got into it, it was it was kind of the idea was born into me from I have an article out there that some of you maybe have read called uh, Beginner's Handbook Parts One, Two, and Three, and if you subscribe to um, the letter, it's part of the educational uh, part of that that you maybe see every three months or something. And I decided to just kind of take and build on that, and then I realized that I, there's just no end to the topics is the problem. Where do you draw the line? you know, from beginner to when, when are you a pro, I guess, when you're when you're making all the income you want to make. But you never really stop learning. And a lot of the concepts um, just kind of drift, you know, from beginner to just learning to making a little money. And they, they never really stop. So I think this is mostly geared to somebody who's kind of newer, except for the last couple of sections, which I think permeate throughout your trading career for the most part. And will also be uh, I'll mention it when I get there, but I've been working on a little educational article for everybody, and I should have it out in the next couple of days. And it, it's going to really emphasize just, you know, what do you look at when you're trading? Um, I get frustrated sometimes in talking to, dealing with people who just kind of refuse to, you know, acknowledge that they don't have a clue what they're doing, I guess would be the best way to phrase it. But they are always revolving their trades around things that simply just don't matter, whether that be news or something they heard or rumors or fundamentals or whatever it is. And there's a great example that a couple of weeks ago, because uh, the last presentation I did, uh, well, I, well, actually, it was two back. When I, I was doing the presentation, the day that the FOMC had their last meeting and the market slid because of that and the discussion that they happened to be about the market over the last two months. And somebody asked me at the end if I changed my view of the market. And I said, no, I don't care what they had to say. And I never got so much blowback about that. And everybody who gave me blowback was just 100% wrong. And the question that I have for them is, you know, what, what were you looking at to determine the market was going to fall after that meeting? That, that is kind of the last part of today that I want to talk about is kind of, you know, what are you looking at when you're, when you're trading? So let's get going with this and, and go through what we're going to go through. This may be in the boring category to some degree, unless some of you spice it up with some really good questions. So you've read this if you saw it, and no, no big deal, just some introductory comments. So let's go through. So here are the topics I want to talk about. What do you, and again, this is kind of somebody, I, I, I know that there are a lot of people, let me preface it with this, who are trader curious. They may have been messing around a little bit. They probably have their money somewhere, what they call safe, you know, and uh, just some bonds or in in a mutual fund or, or wherever. They're, they're thinking about taking over part of it. They maybe are getting some time to day trade. My most common people who come to DTS for in education like are, are, are pretty much two things. The people that have been at it a while and have given up, you know, in, in either learning on their own or from the prior education they had because it, it didn't work. Or there are people who are just got hit the spot where they're ready to, to learn. Sometimes they've just retired or they're retiring early or they just sold a business and they say, hey, I have this money. I don't want to goof around. I want to learn what to do with it. So those are probably the two most common things that I have. But people, while they're in this kind of quasi-state, 
the question I have for you is, you know, what are you, what are you actually doing right now in preparation for whatever it is you want to do? And the question next, of course, is what is it you really want to do? We need to talk about time frames and what to trade, what money, what money management will you use, what tools are needed, uh, what objectives, strategic concepts to give you an edge, how do you learn, how do you spend your time? Hey, Joseph. So let's begin. It's a boring night tonight, Joseph. If you, I'm, and you know, the last two presentations are on the website. Yeah, the, the last two are on there. I did one two weeks ago, I did one two weeks before that, so they've been coming one after another here. And I probably will um, email them to people too because they were both a little bit late in getting out there, so. Well, yeah, you know, that's true, Mark, because a lot of times I call it a boring night. It's about a soft topic that a lot of traders don't understand how important it really is. It, it, it's funny, and again, I'm sorry, I have to step back for a second, but it's funny that the real important part about trading, which is what, is that the right word, important? What people feel the essences of trading, and is, is, is learning charts. And that's really not that hard. It, it really isn't. It, it requires the education level of a fifth grader without exaggeration. But it's the soft topics that end up being the most important, the, the ones that deal with the fact that you become your own worst enemy. Those are the ones that people have to overcome. And learning all of that together in one package is what's important. So a lot of the prior boring ones, Mark, deal with those very important issues. The problem tonight is it is kind of geared to new people. So you may go through this whole thing and say, yeah, okay, I, I heard a good point or two I'm not thinking about, but the rest of it's going to be kind of eh. So you know people who are looking around, please do speak up with any questions or issues that you do have. What are you actually doing? Playing hunches, listening to hot tips, reading the internet to get an edge on everyone, listening to news to get an edge, just dipping your toes in a little bit. Just a couple of funny comments here. I, I have, as you maybe would guess, after all these years, I, I can't tell you how many hot tips I've gotten. You know, and these are not just random hot tips because people wouldn't get a hold of me to give me some stupid tip. These are people who are kind of in the know, people that feel that, you know, they're, they really know this guy who's in the business or blah, 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 blah. I've gotten dozens, hundreds of tips. Somebody take a guess how many of those would have worked out. I've acted on two of them. I acted on two tips out of hundreds, absolutely positively zero absolutely zero has ever worked out, including the two that I tried. Just fun shares, not a big deal. Because uh, the couples I thought were just so reliable and such almost inside information I had, I never has any kind of hot tip ever been correct, ever, never. So take that for what it's worth. Um, naturally, maybe some one of you out there did get a good one. Maybe you really had some inside information, which, you know, great if it's, you know, if it's legal and everything, great. But it's just not something that, that works. It's almost always the reverse of that. So number one, that almost never works. Number two, what was the other one here? Did, read, read this. This comment here is meant to be sarcastic in the very essence in which it was written. Reading the internet to get an edge on everyone. Did you pick up on the sarcasm there? Yet do you know what a common thing this is, is to just go read stuff and then think that you know where things are going now? And again, it's almost always backwards. I, I did a, there was a presentation I did a while back uh, about, I, I shorted a semiconductor, uh, a semiconductor stock at the beginning of the year. And it's fun for me because, you know, I get a lot of people that talk to me and, um, and these people who subscribe to this, a couple of them said, well, you know, what are you doing? Congress is giving money to semiconductors. Everyone out there says this is the place to be, blah, 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 blah. Is that how you're getting your edge? Because you read an article or because you listen to the news and, and now for over six months they talked to, well, going back to the time I shorted it, for six months prior to that, Congress has been giving money to some doctors, wherever the story is. I don't even care what the story is. It doesn't matter because I don't look or listen to any of that crap because it doesn't matter. What I look at is what people are actually doing with that information, and that's what's on a chart. So that is supposed to be very sarcastic to read the Internet to get an edge. You can't get an edge on anybody by reading exactly what everybody else reads. People who get an edge are people who are, are very, very rare breed that have some kind of great inside information or, or, or insight of some kind. E.F. Hutton was great <laughs> in his day. Yeah, boy, that's, you, you go way back with that one. There's a quote here you can read. It's on the next couple of slides. But the next slide here, I want to point something out. If you're just dipping your toes in or whatever it is, just kind of playing around like some people like to say they're doing, 
there's there's a problem with that I want you to be aware of, and that is, does anybody know what it is? Oh, well, it says it on the slide, so I can't ask you now. It can really lead to bad habits. It can lead to terrible habits that you never break, which is to say, just kind of acting on these hunches by, um, you know, you don't like your dinner when you went out, so you short the restaurant that you were at, or whatever it was. These type of things lead to really, really bad habits, or you just, you hear something on the news that, oh, you know, Apple today, they're accused of this, let's short Apple, whatever it is. That That is never going to make money for you, and it, it can lead to habits. So I want you to be very careful if you're playing around. It's like anything that you do, almost anything in life, whether it's learning a sport or learning whatever, if you start off doing it wrong, it's hard to break those habits. You know, I went out and just started golfing, you know, years ago, and I have probably the stupidest looking form in the world. I never took lessons, and I, I, I probably could never change. And if you really want to be a good golfer or whatever, you should not go out and learn the wrong way and then have to correct all your habits. It's the same thing with trading, I believe. So be careful of that if that's where you are right now. And obviously, I'm very familiar with this because I work with a lot of these people. You know, one of the worst things that can happen to somebody, it's a good thing initially, and maybe this applies to some of you, I don't know, but I know many people this has been the case, that they got lucky a while back. You know, they took some investment, whatever it was, and they made a ton of money. I know some people that made, you know, really a lot of money, like enough to retire. Like, And that's great from that point of view. They got lucky with something, or maybe it was their company. You know, their company stock just took off, and uh, they were invested in a lot of company stock. But the problem becomes that they continue to play those hunches. In other words, they didn't trade properly. They got lucky once. You can get lucky. You can go out and just, you know, just whatever it is you think works and, and do it. And if you get lucky, the problem is these people that I know, they've become the worst traders in the world because all they do is keep going for that lucky hunch to get the next lottery ticket, to get the next home run. And they just keep giving back all the money that they had at one point. And it's, it's all in that category of having bad habits. What do you really want to do? What is it that your goal is? If you're here listening to me on what it was clearly announced as a beginner's type presentation, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to manage your long-term money? Do you want to trade a longer-term fund account? Like in other words, just play some hunches and take, take, take longs on different things you think are, are great from rumors that you've heard or whatever it was. Is that what you want to do? Do you want to swing trade while you're working? Do you want to swing trade while you're working? Do you want to day trade part-time for extra, for extra income, or do you want to day trade or learn to day trade slash invest full-time? Here are the terms in general that really don't matter, different terms people use for you know putting money into the market or markets of some kind, investing, long-term trading, core trading, swing trading, day trading, scalping. I, I'm not really hung up on what these terms mean. I mean, just so you know, I, I call everything trading. So the, these three here, to me, are just what I call long-term trading. That's just what they are to me. Holding things for at least multiple days or a couple of weeks up to months or whatever the long-term may lead to. Scalping is an ambiguous term. I'll, I'll talk about that in the next slide for just a quick second. It's a very, very short-term style of day trading. And then, it, so I, I like long-term trading and I like day trading. I don't really like swing trading unless you're with the market. Now, I like you know, swing trading, if you're day trading and you turn it into a swing trade, that's okay. But for people who are working and trying to swing trade, I think it's an extremely dangerous time frame. As a matter of fact, to be willing to bet you're probably not making money. If anybody wants to relay any experiences of their own, feel free. But the charts are, just things are not set up right for people to go to work and then to come home and then to trade from a daily chart. Because the way things work, because the way the market opens typically, I'd be willing to bet that that I'd be willing to bet that of the trades that you stop out of is a swing. If you if you work, and you're not with the market when during market hours, and you're trying to swing trade, I bet you the trades you stop out of, you know, 75% of them happen the day after you take the trade in the morning first thing. That's when they happen a lot. But you can't really get the right reward to risk from a daily chart. It's just too big, too sloppy. So. I think that's a dangerous time frame to be looking at. If you work full time, there's only two things you can do. And that is to manage your long term account, which is perfectly fine for anybody to do. Always a good idea if you know what you're doing. Swing trading for extra income, I consider to be not recommended. There are two videos here. What I'm going to do is throw out some extra videos for you guys to watch if you're interested in these topics because 
there's such a, a library of resources on the free stuff page that it makes it easy for me to do some of this. So here's a couple of links going directly to those two videos. These are right on the free stuff page and they're not events. These are in a special section called educational videos on various topics or in the section called for newbies. So they're always there. And this is, should be a direct link that takes you right there. Um, these are Google links. They don't always work perfectly. So if, if you don't get there, scroll down to the educational videos on various topics or just kind of search the page for, you know, time or frames or beware or whatever it is. So, so those are some great ones if you're newer to get kind of acclimated to time frames as we talk about them. So I'm going to end this discussion here with that. If you work part time or if your work schedule allows you to be available at least one to two mornings from nine to 1030, you can day trade for extra income. Uh, I, I do not think day trading is something anybody should be afraid of. It has kind of a negative sound to some people because you maybe heard bad things about it. I don't really know. But day trading is a great concept for, for anybody. There is on the site, and I sent a video around, uh, it's called What's Your Excuse? It highlights three people who have been students of mine that are in the trading room. And they're, one, of, one of them is somebody just out of high school. One of them, he's called the busiest guy in the planet because he, he's doing so many different things. And one of them is a grandmother that literally is baking while she's trading. It's not an exaggeration. So there is no reason you cannot be day trading. It's very... Um, a very calm, relaxed thing to do if you know how to do it right. And it is not at all what people call risky. Risky is when you're doing something you don't have a clue what you're doing. Or, or risky is any time you take something where the possible consequences are not contained or they're unknown or they're not being managed. That's that's risky. Day trading is the opposite of that. It's, it's controlled. It's controlled risk. It's controlled trades. It's doing everything right. If you do do trade, we recommend that you keep two separate accounts. It's, it's a lot of negatives to having one account to work out of. So have an account for your longer term stuff or swing stuff. If you do that, have an account for day trading. It's possible for anyone to learn to day trade. There are a couple of videos that talk more about day trading. They're called Day Trading A to Z and Day Trading uh, Part 2 because the first one um, had so many questions that people had. I did a follow up to it. And these are actually, again, they're on the free sub page. I don't have the direct links to you here, but those are older ones. And you have to go to the archive page to get that. And here's the link to the archive page. And if you're on the free sub page on all the sections at the top, there is a link to take you to the archive page because the free sub page, as full as it is, is only the last recent 12 to 20 videos. And then everything from the beginning of DTS is going before that is on the archive page. You can go there. And again, once you're there, just search the web page for, you know, day or A to Z or whatever it is that will get you to that video. OK, when you're on the archive page, you actually get taken to YouTube. Only the ones on the free stuff page, the, the front free stuff page are directly embedded into the website there. OK. What, what, what do you trade? What can you trade? Where are we? Time frames? Boom, boom, boom. Again, please speak up if you have any questions whatsoever. What can you trade? You can take stocks, which are also called equities. If you've ever heard that term, it's the same thing. Futures, Forex, commodities. There is a great video on this topic as well. I don't have a picture of it there, um, but it is in that same area on educational videos. And it is called, it's called what to trade. It's in the newbie section if you're looking at it here. Here's the link to that. It's called what to trade. And it reviews some of this, but let me quickly highlight. And there's a very important topic here. There's several important things on this topic of what to trade. Number one is that if you learn how to trade using charts, which is the only way that you can make money trading, it doesn't matter which of these you want to trade. Stocks, futures, Forex, it's, it's all the same thing. It's, it's a chart. Don't let anybody ever tell you because they're simply lying to you. That you need a special technical class to learn Forex instead of futures, instead of stocks. It's all the same thing. When I teach, I could teach with just a, a chart that's blank on the right and the bottom. You wouldn't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. It, it's multiple. It's a correlation of multiple time frames and seeing the battle of the bulls and the bears. It doesn't matter what they're battling over. It doesn't matter at all. Now, yes, of course, you know, Forex trades and pips and futures and, you know, everything has their different units. They trade in. There's different hours. There's, there's different things like that. But in terms of learning the chart to trade, there's absolutely no difference in any of these. And you can simply Google, um, you know, why is futures different than Forex or whatever it is. Now, 
the biggest thing in here in terms of difference is is, is two things. It's, it's times and it's the day trader rule. Stocks are only open. The U.S. stock market is open from 9.30 to 4. Most of you know that, and you have to trade during those hours unless you want to trade pre- or post-market. I don't really recommend that. Futures trades 24-7 with you know, exception, it's closed a little bit, like it's closed on Sunday most of the day, it's closed for 15 minutes after the stock market closes. But there's, again, there's only key times you wanna be trading them. I mean, during times when no markets are open, they're not moving much. Now you can trade futures anytime you want, but generally people are trading them either during European hours or during the US hours. An advantage, and, and Forex also trades the same hours, basically 24 seven. The advantage of futures and Forex for a lot of people is you can trade other than US hours. So if you work a job, a lot of people like to trade Forex, for example, before work. So that's a big plus of being able to trade futures because, or, or um, Forex specifically, because actually the prime hours for Forex are from like, you know, 3.30 in the morning our time till, six, till 9.30 in the morning our time when Europe opens. So that's the prime time for Forex. Futures you can trade before we open, but it's not always the smartest thing to do. It kind of kind of depends. The advantages for a lot of people the futures and the forex are the leverage because it's very highly leveraged and you can trade them with a small account. A negative to trading stocks, futures, excuse me, stocks or equities. A negative to that is that there's if you're trading long term, you can have any size account. You can open a ten dollar account at, at Robinhood, but if you're day trading stocks or equities, you need to have a $25,000 minimum if you're going to a typical account. There is a way that you can trade stocks, equities, as a day trader without having a large account. If you email me about that, I can send you information about what's called prop trading, where you're trading part of a larger account. It's something that'll be set up in a day or two, and you can basically trade 10 to one leverage for what your money is and not worry about day trader rules. So there is a way you can do that to trade stocks. What I caution people about a lot is that there's nothing wrong with trading futures or Forex, but you should not be doing it because you feel it's your only option, your only choice, because you don't have the money. If you don't have the money, consider prop trading. If you don't have the money, consider waiting till you get the money. What I wouldn't even recommend that you try to prop trade unless you have money somewhere. In other words, having no money and, and going out on a credit card to borrow $5,000 to trade is not going to make you successful. You'll never do it properly. So you have to have the money somewhere. But some people maybe have it tied up in a house. They have it tied up in, in stock that they can't sell, in a stock that they have options in or uh, that they work at their company at, whatever. If that's the case and you just don't have the cash available, consider the prop concept. There is a disadvantage to futures and Forex, and that is you don't have any variety. If you're trading futures, typically when we say futures, although there are futures in many things, there's gold futures and oil futures and all that good stuff, but most people are trading futures on the stock market. And the problem with that, with it, of course, to me, is that you only have one thing that you're trading. There's one thing, there's one chart you're looking at. And if you don't like it, it's tough. I trade futures sometimes, but to be honest with everybody, I always tell them, I don't think I could trade futures all by itself because to me, it's such a, a huge disadvantage to look at one chart of the market and maybe a couple other charts and even Forex, there's six pairs you're looking at. But to me, the big advantage I always feel I have in stocks is that there are hundreds of possible charts I could be looking at. There's hundreds of different situations or a lot of different stages. We have stocks that gap, which are very unique opportunities. We have charts that form great patterns on 60 minute charts on daily charts. And there's a variety to look at because of all the different sectors, because of unique stocks. And I think that is a huge advantage that I would not want to be without when I trade. Now, some people get into futures and Forex because they have $4,000, they open an account. I just want to tell you that, you know, practicing without knowing what you're doing typically forms bad habits. And from, Brokers I, I know that I, I've had discussions with, that I work with, that uh, that see accounts that are open that are $5,000 or less. I, I, I think the number is 97% or 98% of them never make money. They just keep getting replenished with more money when they run down. So there's a stat for you for whatever it's worth. Now, I know some of you may want to do that. You may want to get practice and you say, hey, go do it. But I really suggest paper trading for practice. Uh, or whatever it is. So those are your pros and cons on 
stocks, futures, forex, commodities. And again, there's a video, two videos here you can watch. People may say, where's the, hey, where's the, the options? I want to trade options. Well, options is not a separate thing to trade. There is no, there is no thing that moves called an option. Options are derivatives on other things. So typically people are trading options on stocks. You're trading the stock. An option is a way to trade the stock. You have to be very clear about that. Stupidest comment I ever hear, oh, I'm having a hard time trading stocks. I'm going to go trade options. Well, if you don't know where the stock is going, you'll have no clue what to do with the option. The option is just a way to skew the reward to risk on a stock. So if you want to go long Microsoft, you can buy the stock called Microsoft. You could also go long deep in the money calls. You could go long out of the money calls. You can go long in the money calls. You could short puts on Microsoft. You could do a bull put spread, a bull call spread, a bull calendar spread, bull diagonal spread. There's all kinds of different things you can do to execute a bullish position on Microsoft. And they all have very, very different um, financial reward to risk consequences. But options is not a separate thing. It's simply trading the underlying stock. There's your what to trade picture. <laughs> I thought I left it out. All right. Any questions? You guys have to ask some questions or I am starting to feel like this is just going to be extremely boring as we go through this. So any questions yet? No. The, the sections that I think for all of you that are coming up, I think will apply to all of you unless you are just extremely happy with how you're doing and the money you're making. So if you've been trading a while, so you don't consider yourself a new person and you know all this I've talked about so far, there's a couple of sections coming up that I think are very, very important to you. What money are you going to use in money management for that? Considerations. Start off on paper. Go to small risk. Never invest a whole long-term account at once. Earn the right to trade more money. The worst stories out there are dot, 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 and they, they should never happen. There's absolutely one thing that should never, ever be argued about, discussed, or, again, anybody who tells you something different is, is just hurting you. And that is the fact that you should start off whatever you're doing on paper and then go to small risk. Not very long. You can paper trade a week for all I care. But earn the right paper trade and you go to risking 5 or 10 bucks, and then earn the right to move up to 25 50 100 200 500 1000 2000 Whatever you want to end up risking on a trade, I don't care where the top is, but earn the right to progress. It is only the most ignorant of all people that start off risking four or five hundred dollars when they have no experience whatsoever. If you're doing that, you're an ignorant person. And I don't care if you're making money today, you'll be out of business pretty soon. Nobody, no human being can do that. It's not possible. So be smart. The, the biggest offender of that are well, here, let me ask you a question because you guys haven't typed in a while and I need a drink of delicious, frosty, cold Coca-Cola. Who specifically by demographic, sex, whatever else you want to use, would be the most guilty of starting off with large risk amounts? Most guilty in general would be successful people. Number one is, yep, yeah, you're right, exactly right. In class type, type A, I think it's called type A, class A personality is absolutely correct. Successful people in general, and I know we're not supposed to talk about the sex, but the men are going to be most guilty of this because of the whole testosterone thing, and that's absolutely been proven to me. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually, Jeff, that's always a good phrase for men to learn. She's right, but it, it is true. Successful people, especially successful men people, can be the worst people at all, of all to learn because they have been successful in a prior endeavor and they have the attitude that they are not wrong. And if they are wrong, they can fix it and they roll up their sleeves and work harder, work faster, work better. And unfortunately, none of that works in trading. Yeah. In trading, you have to learn that being quote unquote wrong is part of what you do every day. It's how you manage being wrong. It's how you manage being right. And it's very difficult for successful people sometimes to understand the concepts of trading. It's tough, but it's the way it is sometimes. And they are the worst offenders of starting off. I, I, always, I joke when I do, because this topic is in the introduction to technical analysis class that you all get invited to, and I always make the joke, but it's not a joke. And that's typically somebody like that will start off saying, I'm not gonna paper trade, that's for sissies. I, I don't care about losing a few hundred dollars, no big deal to me, so I'll start off risking two, $300. 
and after two weeks of trading, they're down $3,000, $4,000. And gentlemen out there, you type A people, if you're down $3,000, risking 200 bucks a trade, and you don't have a clue what you're doing, how do you get out of the hole? How do you fix it? Start risking four or $500. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what these people do. And there is no more ignorant thing, and it can be totally avoided. I always have to ask you to step back and think, if you want to start trading, learn to trade, and you want to trade the rest of your life, and again, whether it's part-time, whether it's just managing your money, why can't you take a couple, three weeks to at least do the money management part of it right? If you can't make a dime on paper, what gives you the right to even risk 10 bucks, right? So it's one of the most important points I want to make, and there is a great video on this. I don't have a picture of it there, but it's in the Hall of Fame section. And it is called From Chart Reader to Trader Investor. Here, I'll give you the link to it directly on the DTS site. And when you're there, you'll be right in the Hall of Fame section. You can look that stuff over, right? Beginner traders are a high risk. Uh, it, it, high risk traders take silly. Uh, yeah. Well, they don't have to be. I, the only word I would question there, Christine, is beginner traders. Because if you're a beginner trader with me, you, I mean, I, I can't, you know, I can't come into people's homes and control what they do, but no beginner with me is going to do that ever. But I, th I think that, and to tell you the truth, there's experienced traders, quote unquote experience, Christina, and I put it in quotes because they've been trading a long time, but they're still not really making money consistently. And they go on and risk more than they should and they, and they just lose. If you're having a hard time, risking more money is going to make you lose faster. Absolutely positive positively guaranteed, right? Because when you start losing, you start getting protective of your money. And being protective of your money and minimizing losses is one of the fastest ways to go out of business completely. And Paul, wait a minute, isn't minimizing losses a good thing? Well, it depends. If, if, if it is a situation where the, the trade you're in has given you an opportunity to minimize a loss, that's absolutely great. But when you have the mental attitude that right from the start, I have to minimize my loss because I'm hurting, you're going to be out of business very soon, I guarantee you. You can't do that. You have to, when you're in the trade, not care about the money at all. And you have to trade the chart and trade it properly. And eventually, you will go broke if you can't do that. One of my favorite sayings out there is that new, is that, um, new traders go broke by not taking stops. And experienced traders go broke by taking their stops. And by saying that, I don't mean to imply you should trade without stops, absolutely not. You always have to have a stop. But the poor placement and handling of stops and improper management where you're always trying to minimize losses quickly puts you out of business with a slow type of bleed. So this whole section tonight is about a beginner's handbook. And I think it's one of the most important topics because it's something you run into as a beginner almost right away. You're, you're go, you get all set up, you're gonna take your first trade. And what do you do? How much do you risk on it? What do you, how do you handle it? How do you progress your way up? So it's very important that you set up a little progression table um, for yourself. And I think it's something, I'm gonna just set up a mock one to put into the program it, not something you'd have to follow specifically, but just an idea. I never thought it was a difficult thing to do. I, I run through the process here. Paper trade, until you can prove that you can make paper trade and pretend you're using a $500 risk and paper trade until you can make $300 a week or until you can make, uh, I'm sorry, $1,500 a week, that's all. And when you can do that, then move up to a $5 risk and, and use that $5 risk until you can make 15 bucks a week. That's all, nothing hard, some, something very simple to do. Then move to 10, but always gauge your moving up of risk based on your success, and you'll never run into any kind of problem. If you do that and you don't make it as a trader, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to lose some time, but you're not going to lose much money. The worst story in the world here that dot, 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 is the terrible stories that are out there are people that lose entire accounts just starting to trade. They're not even at it four or five months and they lose an entire account. That's just pure stupidity. And I'm not saying you're stupid if you can't learn to trade. As I just indicated, if, if you don't do it the right way, if you don't get any help, if you do get help but you don't follow it or it just doesn't work for you, 
as I said, I could see people getting frustrated. I could see people having to quit, but they should be out minimal money, not losing an account. That's just ignorant if you lose an account. Of course, that's aside from some kind of weird disaster happening, like, you know, you were in a halted stock or you were in a swing trade, a stock went from 100 to 10 overnight or something like that. All right, questions on this slide, where are we? Considerations, money management. Let me uh, take a quick peek at my notes here. Give you the video. Just two minutes, the, the tools. I mean, what do you need? You should all know. You need money or access to money. Either you need money, enough money that you want to take the time to learn how to invest it long term for your future, or enough money that you're able to day trade, or access to money through the prop program, as I, I told you. I gave you my email up there if you want to find out more about that. You need the time. You need the time to kind of figure out what you're doing. Again, if you want to get serious about this. And I don't recommend just goofing around without getting serious because it forms bad habits. So you need to have the time to learn what you want to do, however you want to learn it, whether you want to try learning on your own or whether you want to get professional help. But you need to have some time to devote. And that's really, to me, should be your biggest expense. If things don't work out for you down the road, three months, your biggest loss should be time that you're upset about, not money. You need a broker platform to trade your money. Now, at this point in time, I don't have any kind of official broker platform recommendation for you. I, I have three different places that I use. My charts that you see whenever I do presentations in the trade room or trade station, it's one of my accounts there. Um, I have no problem with that. I also don't recommend a specific platform because there are so many new platforms out there the last five, six years that I've never even looked at. I, I haven't changed platforms in a long time. So I, I simply am not the right person to make a recommendation. I could do that just to you know, have something to say, uh, but I don't. And I, I've been threatening this for a few months, but I would like to get everybody together, have an open forum discussion on platforms, and, and maybe come up with what I would call to be, you know, the, the one or two of the best platforms out there that I could officially recommend. You need to have a computer, <laughs> and whether or not you are long-term managing your money or day trading, there's kind of a big difference here. If you're long-term with your money, you can have a laptop, you can probably, well, you can't use your phone, you need to look at charts, but you can have a laptop and you can have a slow internet connection, it doesn't matter. If you're day trading, you need to have a, a pretty good computer, a desktop computer, fairly recent, maybe in the last year, and also a couple of monitors and a good internet access. Optional things, you may want to have some kind of scanning tool um, to help your, your process of looking for things, not required, not a big deal. And that's all you really need. Except, of course, the other thing that you need is what I'm phrasing as some objective strategic concept. You know, what are you doing out there? What I, I think a favorite question of mine has become when people send me a trade or something, or if I once in a while I'll be talking to somebody who wants to get together and look at some trades. And my favorite thing to ask lately, I think, has been, you know, what's the concept? Why did you take that trade? And it's amazing when you pin somebody down and say, why did you take that trade? It's just total stuttering, total blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it, there's just no rhyme or reason at all. They just liked it. It looked cute. They heard it. You know, and most of the time I know I get some ridiculous trade somebody did, and I'll, I'll check the news, and there is news on it. It's, it's almost always the case. They heard some news, and then they tried to justify it to me on a chart that it was this, 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 blah, blah, blah. You get people... When, when I ask somebody why they took a trade, so often I hear wording like this. Well, the weekly chart, I went long, but the weekly chart was not as falling as fast as it was. And the daily chart looked like it was holding and it broke above the prior day's high. So w what do I say to a comment like that? The weekly chart was falling, was not falling as fast. The daily chart looked like it was holding and it broke above the prior day's high. Yeah, that's just, that's just all gobbledygook crap coming out of your mouth. There's no strategic concept. Show me how, show me five other trades you did or trades you recognize where that combination of things produce profit for you, right? It's nothing. It's just your subjective opinion of what you think is happening. You have to learn objective concepts, and those objective concepts only come from charts. So how do you learn that? Well, first of all, you don't have to learn if you don't want to. You can just follow. What do I mean follow? Well, 
just use services that you trust that you know work. Now, not mutual funds. I've explained mutual funds. Mutual funds don't make money. I mean, they don't, they don't even keep up with the market. But I mean, maybe you have a service that you like. For example, at DTS, I have two services. I have a day trading room where we trade together during the day, the open couple hours. And I have a long-term trader service. I'm not here to pump those, just, you know, gratuitous mention. They don't both do excellent. And perhaps you're at a point in your life where you're busy and you don't want to learn right now. Maybe you're going in the future and you just subscribe like a lot of people do to my long-term trader and you make good money just following somebody. That's something you can do. I do caution you though, is that you have to make up your mind if you want to <laughs> follow or learn. I, I can't tell you how many times I, I have somebody who's quote unquote following and they decide that they're going to intervene and do it differently and they just screw up the trade. I mean, so you just hear from that a lot. Um, yeah, gosh, more than I want to hear. People that literally subscribe to my long-term service and I, I get this regretful letter saying, boy, you know, I entered that trade with you short and I got out because one day it, it popped it popped on some news and I thought I should get out and stand aside and the next day it dropped so fast I couldn't get back in. And it's a trade that makes six, seven, eight times the money risk huge winning trade and they're not in it because they quote unquote knew better. You can't do that. I mean, if you want to learn, learn. If you want to follow, follow. If you want to learn while you follow, do that. But you, you can't mix the two. If you don't know what you're doing, don't supersede the person you're learning from, if that makes any sense to you. Now the goal, of course, the goal, and many, many people who I've trained have achieved this goal, the goal is to have the best of both worlds. There are people in the trading room that are fantastic independent traders and they follow me to some extent, but they know their own trading concepts and they have the best of both worlds where they can say, here's what Paul's doing. I like it. I think I'll join him. Or here's what Paul's doing. Eh, I'm not sure I like that. I think I'm going to do what I want to do here. So you kind of get the best of both. When you're at a level you can do that, that's the goal. That's where you want to be is to be your own self-sustaining, self-proficient trader. And then if you still want to tag along with me, get my advice and stuff, great. That's what you want to do. But until you achieve that level, if you're going to follow, follow. Okay. <laughs> I like that, a George divide. <laughs> for those of you that are new, there are a lot of Seinfeld references for some reason. I'm not sure how that all started, right? So there's there's following, and um, if you if this last comment is confusing to you, if you're following and you want to learn, great. Follow with your real money, as long as you're convinced you like the service you're following. Again, whether it's me or you like another service, that's fine. But if you trust that service, follow them with your money. And then if you're going to start goofing around on your own, do that on paper is what that means. Don't, 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 don't mix the two and, and goof up with the service you're following that is maybe going to make good money for you. All right. If you want to, if you want to learn, if you want to learn on your own, let me start off with some great quotes. Now, some of a couple of these quotes are coming from the article that I wrote about the beginner's handbook, but I think these quotes are worth just kind of listening to because this is kind of a philosophical conversation, if you will. I'm not here to sell you on what to do. I'm just here to help you with that decision process. But once you decide on your time frame, it's time to begin. Not time to begin trading, but rather time to begin figuring out exactly what strategies you want to use to capture price movement, to capture price movement. Trading is one of the most challenging endeavors in which one can participate. Unfortunately, most traders will spend more time getting educated and what flat screens to buy before um, and what flat screens before buying one, then they will spend getting educated in trading concepts before buying a stock. That's a very true comment. It really is, right? I mean, a lot of people spend more time researching the monitors that they buy before they spend researching how to trade before they buy their first stock. Many, most traders do not feel the need to get educated in trading. Most traders also fail. No one would try to be a doctor or lawyer without proper schooling. Yet, for some reason, new traders feel that this is an easy to conquer profession. The truth is that some of the smartest and most successful people often have the most difficult time trading. They don't have to, but they do because they don't control their personalities. Continuous success before trading often translates to overconfidence and stubbornness. 
while trading. And this is a bad combination. You have to be able to admit when you are wrong and to move on quickly. And perhaps my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, oh, successful people often become perfectionists. And by the way, I have that problem, so I can relate to it. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and that's not complimenting myself. That's more of an insult than a compliment. For those of you that are maybe have the same problem, what is the biggest problem with perfectionists? It's something I battle with all the time. What, what is the big problem, biggest problem with perfectionists? By the way, I'm not a perfectionist in my, um, <laughs> in my grammar per se. <laughs> I, I know I leave a lot of punctuation misplaced, but now it's not that they can't be wrong. Pro, um, well, to me, my biggest issue, it's a time thing, right? Because perfectionists will spend 80% of their time doing the last 10% of the job, right? You agree? That's my biggest thing. Sometimes you get to a point where, especially like own personal stuff that nobody else will see. <laughs> you know, it's one thing if I want to make something perfect. Like when I put the, the home study course together, I really went out of my way to make that perfect. But there was a goal and that made sense to do that. But I have a spreadsheet that nobody but me can see, right? That's only my own personal use. Does it really matter if I take that extra time to make it perfect? Because that extra time is doubling the time I took on the sheet, right? Because some of you relate to that. So that, that can be a bad thing, right? Successful people often become perfectionists. This is a quality not suited for trading. Good traders don't insist on getting them all right. The goal is to make money. Doctors often want to save the patient at all costs. In the market, six stocks are often killed off quickly. Um, kind of a, a true thing. I I've, have personally been involved trading, training doctors. And while I've always said it, I didn't realize how true it is until you actually tried to train them. Um, their, their view of trading stocks is similar to the view they've learned in the medical profession, which is spend any money necessary to save a patient, right? Nobody would, no doctor would say, well, you know what, I know you're here and you're about to, you know, I, I, you're about to die and I could save you, but you know what, that procedure costs X amount of money and I don't think you have the money or the proper insurance to cover it, so I'll just go out on the street and die. No doctor is going to say that. And that's how they handle their trading too. If a stock is going against them, they want to buy more and more and more shares, you know, to save the trade, as you would call it. They can't stand the thought of killing a trade. It's like killing a patient to them. I know this is not just hyperbole. It's really how, how doctors think. And <laughs> any doctor who has listened to me talk agrees with me, right? Yeah, insurance companies would be good traders, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Probably a lot of judges. For back in the old days, maybe the old people that ran the gallows, they'd be good traders too, probably. And one of my favorites is you don't have to be right to make money. And a lot of people don't understand this one. Uh, Mark, Jeff, do you have to be right to make money? I'm picking on you guys because I know <laughs> I know you are traders after my own heart. Yeah, heck no, you don't. I mean, it's, it doesn't hurt to be right. And this is all part of what I kind of roll into what I, when I talk about trading, what I, I call the math and probabilities part of trading. I didn't put a picture of it here, but what I teach, I, I call the three-legged stool, which is superior technical analysis, math and probabilities, and then the psychological part or the confidence part, which all three have to come together. And if they don't, it's, it's hard. I don't think any, just like any stool can't stand on two legs, it's hard as a trader to stand without the two legs. And the math and probabilities thing to me is my kind of definition of you, you don't have to be right to make money type of thing. This is where new traders fail. If you, if you are your own trader, not following recommendations. So what I'm saying here is if you are going off to learn to be your own trader and you're struggling, th these are the key questions where, where traders fail. When you took that trade, can you state exactly why you took it? And as I mentioned earlier, when I talked to people, this is one of the biggest things. They, they, they can't. They, they can't state objective strategic concepts of why they took something. Most of the time, there are none. It's all subjective. Let me say this also here, that the subjective objective thing, how does it work in trading? When traders first come to the market, they're almost totally subjective, right? It's like that stock can't go any higher. Oh, that stock's got to turn around soon. Oh, they just announced good news for this company. I think it's going higher. It's all subjective. 
And these people lose, of course. So naturally, they win sometimes. Anybody, anybody can guess sometimes and get stuff right. And you get a few things right, and you think you're doing great. And then all it does is set you up for failure because you get confidence in something that's wrong. And then when you start losing, you think you're doing it right, and you just apply more and more money, and you lose very quickly. So making money the wrong way is a hugely negative thing. But as you go on, the goal, and when you learn technical analysis, when I teach technical analysis, the goal is to become as objective as possible, but there's a limit. Technical analysis is not purely objective. It never will be. If it was, it could be taught as a system. It could be computerized. There would be a computer program that you could use, day training, whatever, and it doesn't exist. If you think it does, go try them out because they don't work. They don't exist. So your goal is to get as objective as possible, but in the final analysis, there's always going to be some subjectivity, and that's what makes a trader. That's what makes a market. That's what makes some people win and some people lose because in the final analysis, you want to be as objective as possible so that you can understand what you're doing, so you can duplicate what you're doing, so you can analyze and go back and, and critique what you're doing. But there's always going to be that little subjectivity in there. There, there has to be. And I've proven that uh, in different presentations where I, I can get you guys to, to split 50-50 and whether or not a certain pattern is bullish or bearish. Could you find that same concept next time? If you can't find the same concept next time, and, and by the way, if you ask me these questions, if you were, you, know, you may be saying, well, Paul, you're throwing these things out here. Paul, can you take a trade? Can you say, absolutely, people in the room, <laughs> you guys in the room with me, can I state why I took a trade? I, I do every single day continuously throughout the day and then put in writing at the end of the day, absolutely positively. Can you find the same concept next time? Well, that's the goal. I mean, naturally, I may goof up, but that is the whole thing. I know exactly what I'm looking for all the time. And if, if I have a bad trade, I also understand, excuse me, if I have a losing trade, I can go back and say, okay, you know what? That was a good trade. I would do that again tomorrow. It just didn't work today. And I just go back and say, hey, you know what? I, I didn't do that right. You know, I, and if you're in the room with me again, have I ever said I screwed up? Have I ever said, you know what, that was a bad trade? Have I ever admitted that after the fact, even after maybe we all lost money on? Did I ever come back and say, eh, yeah, I, I goofed up because you know what, I can goof up too. You get carried away, you're in the middle of the day, you see this, you see that, and you kind of react to something, you go, oh my gosh, what did I do? I entered that thing, I'm three quarters away at Target and I jumped in, that's stupid. It happens, but the important thing is, can you go back and look at it and say, I goofed up? See, traders that struggle can't do that, or more importantly, they don't do that. Can you tell someone why you do not like a trade? If somebody suggests something to you, can you objectively say, I would never do that, here's why? These are kind of almost a test, if you will, to, to, to say, do you have some concept of what you're doing? Can you look back at a trade and state that it was a good or bad, regardless if it made money? Remember all you know, good trades and making money are not synonymous. You can have good trades that lose money. You can have bad trades that make money. If you don't know the difference, you will, you will always and forever struggle. How do you learn? First method, teach yourself. How do you do that? Well, you gather all the information you can. There, there is a problem to that. And that is, the, pro the problem with gathering information is that I, I, I don't just believe, I know for a fact, that it is best to learn a style, right? A way of doing things. And if you're out there randomly gathering, you're probably collecting a whole bunch of different styles. And synthesizing that would be impossible because you don't know the person who created it, who taught it, who uses it. Um, you, you have conflicting things. It's very difficult. So you do want to try and synthesize um, information from one style. The best answer I have for you if you want to learn on your own is right here at DTS because the free stuff page is the biggest source of free information out there. And it's all my style. You're not going to hear any conflicts, so to speak. It's all going to be one style of trading. So it's a good spot to go if you want to, to learn. But you eventually end up with kind of a trial and error method. And keep in mind, at the free stuff page, you're not learning technical analysis. You're not being taught technical analysis. You're seeing the end result of technical analysis and you're seeing a lot of great videos that I, I tell the seminar students they should watch to supplement what they know on a philosophical level and some of it's on a very detailed technical level, but the detail doesn't make sense to you unless you know the underlying concept of the technical concept. So 
you're not going to learn per se. And I have to be honest with you, I've had back and forth reservations about the whole concept of the free stuff page. It's just like, you know, the, the trade of the week video, sending them around. There's a good and bad to them. They have a good purpose, um, but they can be bad in the wrong hands because people think they can learn by reverse engineering. It's just not the case. It doesn't work that way. So you end up with a trial and error type of method. Now, the right person can learn this way, and, and I think you can. I think it's a difficult route, but maybe it's the proper route for somebody who's uh, at that point where they're, they're not really dedicating full time. They just want to stick their toes in a little bit. That's great. So that's one way to do it, of course. And the other way to do it, well, the, the pros and cons of teaching yourself are it's cheap, at least initially. It's cheap getting your quote unquote education. It costs you nothing. But here's the big question is, as you've been trading for six months, where are you six months down the road? It costs you nothing for your education, but if you're losing money, what good did that do you? Even if you're making money, if you're making a fraction of the money you could have, if you spend five, six grand on a seminar program, you may pay it back in a, in a month. You may stop. I, there are people I know that literally lose more money every two weeks than a seminar program costs, and yet they refuse to, because of pride, they refuse to say, I'm going to let somebody teach me this. I'll figure it out myself. I don't know where the line comes between smarts and not so smarts in there. Pride is the thing, you know, pro, people want to teach themselves a lot. So there's a personalities out there that people want to teach themselves. And uh, you satisfy that by having the end result to say, I taught myself how to do this. And it's necessary for certain personalities. You know, I know people that just will not take advice from somebody else, not on something that they feel they should know. And I know people that are, there are some people that there are even people that have taken the seminar program, but I know they would never subscribe to the long-term letter or to the trade room because they, they just don't have the pride. They have too much pride to say, I can't do this myself or to even look for help. They, they want to say, even if it takes me longer, even though I've taken the seminar program, I want to do this on my own. I don't want to look at anything you have to tell me. So those are the pros of teaching. The cons, of course, it can take a long time. And there's this issue that you can't grade yourself. And it's hard not to gather various ideas and styles. I mean, you go out, well, a lot of people do, if you're not on like my free stuff page, and you start perusing out there, it, you're just gonna be, it, it's a mess out there. I mean, it, it, the learning to trade is unfortunately probably the, one of the most scam filled, disgusting places to be out there. It, it just is. It's just the truth of it. Now, not everybody is like that. I mean, I, if you're here listening to me, hopefully, you know, I'm not like that. But there's a lot of people out there that, you know, that don't know what they're doing with a good heart. that don't know what they're doing with a bad heart. And there's a lot of stuff out there that's just meaningless. It's just people just showing you stuff that, you know, hey, here's what I did, but it really is not going to help you in any way, shape or form. So it's hard to know what is total garbage out there, right? Where are we? Uh, it's six o'clock. Gosh, I thought I would, uh, I have two slides left. So, so here, um, if you, so if you don't want to teach yourself and your personality allows you is to find a mentor, learn one style. There are many ways to make money, but you won't make money if you don't follow one of those styles. The free stuff page allows you to get to know me. It's one of the purposes I like of the free stuff page is that you get to know me because you hear me in various venues talking on different things. You may not like me, look somewhere else. If you do like me, there's no better place to learn than, and here comes the one gratuitous DTS plug coming, the DTS Seminar Program and Home Study Course. And if you want to find out more about those, go to the website, figure it out, ask me, whatever you want to do, okay? And Christine, let me take your question in just a second there, because I, I just have one slide left, and then people who want to bug out of here can bug out of here. Um, how do you spend your time? I put this in here um, kind of as the last thing here. New day traders. I'm saying day traders because, you know, if, if you're long term, you don't usually spend as much time. But new day traders spend most of their time staring at the screen. They spend the second most amount of time preparing for the day. And a lot of that prep time is wasted because they're looking at stuff that doesn't matter anyhow. And by the way, there's a great video out there you should watch. It's called um, Looking at All the Wrong Things. You'll have to find it. I don't know where it is. It's either on the free sub page or on the, on the archive page. But if you, if you just search the page for those words, it's, it's one of my favorites. And they spend very little time in review or follow-up. And as you might guess, this is exactly backwards, literally. What you should do 
as a day trader, a new trader, an experienced trader, is spend most of your time reviewing what you did and creating what if scenarios. What do I mean by what if scenarios? I mean, going back, and they teach us in the second class, Mastering Advanced Tactics, one of the, the biggest things you can do is to improve your, your, your selection, your strategic selections, to improve your entries, to improve your, your exits, to improve your management, is to go back and play different what if scenarios. What if I changed my management plan to be this instead of what I do? Would I make more money over 10 or 20 trades? That's where you make money as a trained trader or if you're teaching yourself. As a matter of fact, if you're teaching yourself, this is the only way that you learn by what if scenarios. I called it before trial and error, but the better term for it would be creating what if scenarios. And what the next thing you should spend time on is preparing for the day if you do it properly. And then the last thing you should spend time on is sitting in front of the screen, a couple hours a day. You don't have to sit there when I do. I think the opening hour and a half is prime time for a whole lot of reasons. But whatever time you like is fine. But don't sit there more than a couple. Maybe you want to sit there an hour and a half and come back an hour later. That's fine too. But don't sit there for six and a half hours trading. I, I guarantee you it will be to your detriment. All right? And then I'll take any questions. And I see I got a couple there already. Uh, I, I mentioned prop trading. Email me if you want to find out about prop trading. And boom, 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 boom. That's it. We'll leave it there. So, Christine, you're, using, you're utilizing the free stuff page to familiarize your brain with your trading patterns, terms, etc. And tell you, great. That that I think is the primary purpose of it. When, when I get this, look for the next educational email that comes out. I've been working on it kind of for a while, and it's it's the one that I told you about when I when I started. But but in there, I just want to kind of hit on that concept a, a lot that I think you mentioned right there. And the, the big question, I hit some of them tonight because they were top on my mind, I think, because I've been writing that. But the big question always is, you know, why did you just do that trade? You know, what about that trade was compelling to you? And when you can't even begin to answer, there's something wrong. Very pleasant group here. Oh, the trading room? Well, most of them are pleasant, Robert. I can think of a couple of exceptions. And I'm not always pleasant pretty funny. I tell good jokes, but I'm not always real pleasant. All right. Are there any questions? I did not expect this one to run over of all ones. You never know what's going to happen. Are there any questions? I'll call it officially over for those you want to leave, but feel free if you have any questions. Yeah, right. We have a good time in the trading room and we usually make money, which kind of makes it fun too. It's hard to be fun or have fun if you're losing money, but that happens once in a while. I can't help it. Any questions? Anything? Anybody? Thanks for your comments. For those of you who were commenting, anything? Thanks, Mark. Mark is, uh, you know, Mark is great. He's all, always here, very experienced trader, knows what he's doing, been through everything, but always feels the need to attend these, which I think is smart and good and great. Well, thanks, Christina. Everybody have a great night. We'll see you whenever I see you next.